go ahead now. Michael Drake versus Le Leonte Kendall. <clears throat> Very good, Your Honor. Uh, should I start? Uh, I think we have everyone here. Yep. Let's go ahead and ask Mr. Drake and Miss um, Kendall to raise your right hand. <clears throat> Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give to the court is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. Mr. Drake, I need to hear you. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Yes. Thank you. And is there a court report on this matter? No, Your Honor. All right, then. Thank you so much. You may proceed. Uh, Your Honor, very quickly, uh, the parties are the mother and father of a uh, minor child, Thimbani Drake, male born 2019. The parties never married. Father legitimated the child by order of Gwinnett Superior Court. Uh, order entered April 20, 2021. A uh, order of legitimation is attached to the petition. Um, father and mother, father filed for a petition for custody and child support in March of 2023, seeking uh, temporary and permanent joint legal and primary physical custody and a child support determination. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Judge, I got the same thing you do. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Mother answered on April 5 of the same year at seeking primary physical custody and joint legal. Since that point, on April 26, father filed an emer emergency motion seeking sole legal and physical custody of the child based on the fact that the child was delivered to daycare on several occasions smelling of marijuana. A mother delivery driver at the time was taking the child on all night travels with her delivering the child the next day exhausted, dirty, and in soiled diapers. Um, the child's behavior as a result when mother was having parenting times was aggressive, both towards the other children and uh, daycare workers. Uh, and it is not believed that mother could or now can provide a healthy or stable home life for the child. It is to be noted that father and mother basically shared 50-50 custody prior to uh, mother departing. And uh, in terms of departing since the filing of the emergency petition, on or about May 15, without prior notice to father, mother left the jurisdiction to go to St. Luke, St. Louis, Missouri, um, simply dropping the child off at daycare with the child's clothes and informing the daycare worker to inform father. Um, at this point, Your Honor, we're seeking temporary sole or primary physical legal custody. If visitation is granted, we'd ask that it be supervised and subject to other safeguards for the child. And we're asking for sole or joint legal custody with if it's legal custody, father having final decision-making in all areas in as much as mother isn't even here. Okay. Is it my turn to speak, Your Honor? Yes, but hold on for a second. So right now, the father has custody of the child because mother left the child to go to St. Louis. Right. And there's no... And what was the date that mother went to St. Louis again? May 15, Your Honor. May 15th of this year. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. All right. And the motion, the petition for custody was filed when? The initial petition for custody was filed in April of um, 2021 is what I put down. 2020 what? I'm sorry, 2020, Mark, I read the wrong line. Please forgive me, Your Honor. The initial petition for custody was filed in March 24 of 2023. Okay, so the petition was filed before the mom left the child. Right, the initial petition for custody. Essentially what happened, Judge, was the father legitimated, they were still living together. There was no custody order in place as they were simply residing together. And then um, when they decided to split up at a point in time after that, father decided that he needed to establish his uh, parental cust custodial rights, et cetera. And that's when he filed. And Your Honor, before you proceed with that, actually, we broke up January 17, 2021. Me and his parents sat down and had a conversation December the 7th regarding legitimizing Michael Drake. 
judges. At that time, January 17th, we were already broken up due to his abuse. And I had already moved out of the home. I don't know, Jack. Okay. Uh, well, she'll have an opportunity to present her opening. Let me know when you're when you are done. Okay, I'm done. Okay, you then you may present your opening. So, Your Honor, on March the seventh, two thousand and twenty-three, Mr. Drake was given notice that I wanted to relocate from the state of Georgia due to the lack of physical and financial help from him and his family. The daycare that our son goes to is family owned. Now, since we have broken up January 17th. As in his family owns the daycare? Yes, ma'am. What, what part of the family owns the daycare? Like Mr. Drake's mom? family, his mom and his brother, they are all in business together owning the daycare centers, the Creekstone Academies. Oh, okay. So this is a family daycare. So when you drop them off at the family daycare, you're talking to family, basically saying you're out of town. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, also, object, to, object. also to give notice to that statement there, he was told on April the 11th that I had already signed my new lease here in St. Louis, Missouri. I had even proposed a new co-parenting plan to him, which that was proposed to him on March the 7th. He said he needed time to think about it. He stalled communication. Once I reached back out to say, hey, where are we? What are you doing? What are you thinking of? He stated to me then through text message that he is thinking of something that will work out for the both of us. By that time, I had already told him like, hey, I gave my current apartment my notice to vacate. I had already secured an apartment here in St. Louis, Missouri, signed the lease. And that's when March 24th, I was, or March 29th, rather, I was served the custody papers. And to answer to the abandonment part of that, he had already had our son because we were still doing a week on and week off joint custody. He already had our son that week. When I gave him notice that I was leaving, I texted him and said, hey, my mother is sick and I have to leave due to the emergency because she has cancer. They had scheduled her a emergency operation and I had to leave. Given that I already gave my apartment my notice to vacate, I had to leave the, the baby there because of the notice to stay, that we couldn't take him out of the state. So... I had to go ahead and turn over his belongings that I did have and move all of my things out of that said apartment because they already leased it out. So then I came here to St. Louis, but he also had notice of that. We have been talking via text message and FaceTime every day since May 17th, 2023 of this year. Now, when it comes to the marijuana, me dropping my baby off at daycare, smelling of marijuana and dirty soil clothing. I have pictures that I've taken of our son day to day when I've had him. Since it is a family owned and operated establishment, the daycare director, Angela, stated April the 4th, 2023, when I told her about the child custody case and could she go ahead and write the statement saying that all of last year, 2022, that I was called as the primary parent to come up to the daycare anytime that Bonnie was sick. Is that object based on hearsay? Anytime that then Bonnie was sick. Okay, so you can't say what she said, but if you're saying something you told her, I, I will give you some leeway with regard to that. But if you're saying something she said, you cannot you cannot say something she said. Okay. But I did tell her about the case and I asked her to provide the proper documentation that will refute all of those allegations against me. And also I asked the teachers there. I was told then after that, yeah, April the eleventh, that they could not provide the proper documentation. <clears throat> okay. Um, because you're saying they're saying that what they're refusing to do, I'm just going to give her some leeway on that regard, Mr. Tanner. All right, go ahead. 
because at that point it's family owned. I can't get the documentation that I need because I was told that it was against the law and that they should not get involved in the case. So I couldn't get the documentation that I needed from the daycare workers stating that I never dropped him off in dirty soil clothing. He never smelled the marijuana and that his behavior only started when the case got into the courts. Then Bonnie has not acted out beforehand at that magnitude. And then also to double back to Michael stating that he wasn't aware of me leaving, Michael had knowledge January 11th of 2023 when he stated to me via text message that then Bonnie would have to come live with me full time, given that his parents said that then Bonnie would be a threat living there because he wasn't vaccinated. He then on stayed at my house for a week extra, coming over, parenting then Bonnie in my home, which was set up with his learning center, reading center, and play area with a little dinner table for a toddler. He cared for Thin Bonnie in my home. So given that, with all of this being said, we've been co-parenting now for two and a half years. With all that being said, how come now I'm just an unfit mom? How come now I'm all of a sudden <laughs> a mom who's smoking around her child? And then when it comes to me being a delivery driver, I drive for Uber. I don't deliver. And I know I couldn't present this into the court odyssey, but just given here, I even have my monthly statements uh, from Uber, how much I drive and how much I make a month because that's how much I drive at the time. And that's the only thing I do. You can't take a baby while you're picking up passengers. I feel like to just state the least that Mr. Drake did this because I was leaving the state of Georgia. I did propose to him a new co-parenting plan that I did present to the family um, division services when I went to try to get counsel. I was told at the time that it was a very fair plan. I had told the, the him that the plan was that he can get them Bonnie summers made through August, school <clears throat> break, every holiday, and anytime planned visits as long as they're planned and agreed to. That's when he then stalled me and said, I will have to think about that. And I was also then served papers instead of just communicating. All right, when was the legitimation done? Uh, excuse me, uh, the legitimation was done uh, April 2022. Uh, 21. April of 2021? Yes, ma'am. And at that time, was a parenting plan put in place or was it just that they... No, ma'am, because the parties were living together at that time. Objection. We were not living together. We broke up January 17th. I was living in the apartment that we shared. He had then moved back in with his parents. Judge, I'm sorry. I, Regardless, I it, 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 that, that is not, that, that, that issue, that answer doesn't really... <laughs> Um, make much of a difference to so the court. I just wanted to know when the legitimation was, and I don't think there was any dispute that it was in, um, that it was in April of 2021. Whether they were living together or not is not important. What's important is if there's a parenting plan, I'll look at it, and if there isn't, there isn't. Um, so that, that's the issue. All right, so I've heard from both of you with regard to the issues that I've been looking out for. Um, based on the motion that I saw, it looked as if you were filing for a motion for a guardian ad litem in the case. Let me ask you, um, are you asking for a guardian ad litem for what reasons? Because um, it sounds like they've been co-parenting for two and a half years. Why do we, why do you need? Well, the issue as to um, her drug use, et cetera, has uh, escalated. Moreover, she's left the jurisdiction. There's nothing in place. The parties had joint physical custody, essentially, you know, de facto joint physical custody. And now um, she is seeking to remove the child from the jurisdiction to possibly live in St. Louis. Seems to me that a, a guardian ad litem is necessary to uh, fully investigate the issues. Fully investigate the issue of 
have uh, a child. I mean, between, some maybe. of us have to have primary custody here, right? Because of the distance between the parties. Someone's going to have to be the final decision maker. And the parties are in disagreement as to who that should be. So I felt that a guardian ad litem is the best course for the most thorough investigation to occur. I probably would feel that way again. Um, and I'll hear from you. I'm not going to foreclose it. But if you've already been parent co-parenting for two and a half years, to me, you're, you, you, there's a less need for a guardian. Um, and then for the issue of the issue with the drugs, generally that would be important. But if she's in St. Louis, there's there really isn't much a guardian at Lyme is going to do on drugs because she doesn't have the kid. Um, um, and also, I'm currently pregnant right now, and I left the state as well to be of less stress. And again, my mother is sick. He knew that. Okay. I have text messages proving that he had I'm told me. Hello, hello. I'm sorry. It was my connection, Your Honor. Yeah, yeah. You, you. I, listen, I need for both of you to just kind of make sure everybody listens because, you know, I I know what I need and I just want to get to what I need. All right. Um, this is you'll you'll have your full day in court at some point, but right now we're just kind of dealing with particular issues. So I need I know I need to know that particular information. The other stuff is just extraneous. I can't do anything with it. So there's no need of giving it to me. Okay. okay. Um. So with regard to the child right now. Miss Marie, do you have, or is there any plan right now for the child to, to visit with you? What's the plan right now? The plan right now, I would like for him to visit, you know, for the summer if he can. Okay, right now you don't, right now you all are not visiting with the child? No, I haven't been able to visit because of now my pregnancy. I'm about five months long almost, so I can't travel as much as I would like to. Okay, so when you left in May, you were pregnant. Yes, ma'am. Because okay, you guys haven't been together since 2021. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. And did Mr. Drake, was a Mr. Drake aware that you were pregnant? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It is not Mr. Drake's child, just to point out your own obvious. Oh yeah. Okay. I, I made I was I made that assumption, but you're right. I should have asked. Yeah, you know, a little tequila, a little moonlight, you know. Never know. Never know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I apologize. All right. So um, let, let's, I'm going to let you go ahead and swear your client in. Let me tell you where I want to go. Um, I want to go to the drug issue. Um, so I want to know what, what particularly he was speaking of and whether or not there was any drug uses in the home when they were both together. Um, and then I want to know what he's particularly talking about now. Here, here's my thing, and I and I think to some extent, Miss um, um, Maria on here, Miss uh, Kendall, Kendall mentioned it. You know, if, if you're co-parenting for two and a half years, usually issues of being unfit become more apparent um, before two and a half years hit. Um, so, whether a child is dirty or not cleaned, those things are important. But it it doesn't necessarily make me overly worried about abuse and drug use and things of that nature and just kind of being unfit. I need to hear evidence where we're talking about actual unfit because that's going to make a difference. I mean, whether somebody brings a kid to you and their hair is not washed, I mean, it's important, but it's not going to make me say you can't visit your child because you didn't wash his hair. So well, get, me, get me to the meat of what you're talking about so that I'll know whether or not I need to back up and give more time to your issue or whether or not um, this is kind of be more of an um, expedited matter. Okay, so give me a moment and then we'll get started. Okay. Yeah. Get started. Mr. Tanner? Yes, Your Honor. Sorry, right. clicking in. Right. I think that the first and best witness actually would be Ms. Ficklin. She is the daycare worker who observed uh, the situation. So if, if it's okay with the court, I'd like to swear her in first. I think that would focus most on your issues. Yes. Okay. Ms. Flicklin, if you would open your, your video. All right. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give to the court is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Ms. Flicklin, I cannot hear you. Can you... Turn up your volume, please. 
Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Ficklin. Yes. Okay. Ms. Ficklin, will you please state your name? Jordan Ficklin. And Ms. Ficklin, what do you do for a living? Um, I work as a daycare worker at Creekstone Academy. Uh, how long have you worked there? Seven months. And what are your day-to-day -day responsibilities at Creekstone Academy? Um, watching over the children, teaching the children. Um, those are my day-to-day -day duties. Okay. Uh, was one of the children from Bonnie Drake? He was. And how long did you watch over him? Um, I watched over Tim Bonnie until May. I'm sorry, ma'am. Until, until May. Okay. And until May, from, when did you start watching him? I started watching Tim Bonnie when I started in November. Okay. Um, did you know anything about uh, Tim Bonnie's parents? Uh, not much. I seen them and drop off and pick up, but that was pretty much it. I didn't know what they had going on at home. Okay. Um, did you have any concerns about Thimbani while he was in your care? Uh, the only concerns I had was when his actions started, when he started to um, act out of normal a couple of months ago. And how did it, can you explain in a little bit more detail what he was acting out of normal meant? Um, he would scream when we would try to get something he didn't want to do. He would begin to throw toys across the room, and he also began to hit the teachers. Did you mention this to both his parents? Um, I mentioned it to mom. I did also mention it to Dimbani's grandmother, his dad's father. Uh, no, his dad's mother, I'm sorry. Did you ever notice uh, Thimbani uh, smelling of anything when he was delivered to the daycare? Um, only one particular time, and that was his book bag, but no other time after that or before. And what did it smell like? Um, it just smelled like a little bit of marijuana. That's it. Okay. And who delivered him to school that day? Do you know? It was his mother. And um, did you have any knowledge of Thimbani uh, clothing? And uh, did, did his mother share with you anything about uh, taking Thimbani with her to work? To work? Um, it was just one time she mentioned uh, Thimbani wrote with her one time. But other than that, no. And was that at night or during the day? Do you know? Uh, she didn't mention the time of day. Okay, um, so is it your testimony that mother was taking Thimbani with her at least one time to work? Um, that is one time that I know of. Okay, um, do you know where Ms. Uh, Thimbani's mother is now? Uh, from what I just heard, St. Louis, no, before that, no. Okay, um, were you on... Were you at the daycare when Ms. Uh, Kimball dropped off Thimbani uh, for the last time? I'm pretty sure I was. I don't recall what date it was. And um, do you recall Thimbani being dropped off with his uh, clothing or bags of clothing at that time? Um, I was in the room at that time when his clothing was dropped off. I was in, in the office. Okay, did you see the clothing in bags after he was dropped off? The clothes, did I see the clothing in the office? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did see the clothing in the office. Um, have you been in communication with Thimbani, uh, with uh, Thimbani's mother since she left? No, I have not. Um, has, and I'm sorry, ma'am, you fade in and out. I don't know what the microphone is doing. It may just uh, be that. Um, did you ever have concerns when Mr. Drake was dropping off the child at school? No, I did not have any concerns when he was dropping it off. And uh, was the child always, uh, did the child ever smell like marijuana when he was dropping off the child? No. Did the uh, book bag ever smell like marijuana when he was dropping off the child? No. And um, was the child always delivered in clean clothing and looking, uh, like you had a good night's sleep? Yes. Uh, 
the time period where you smelled the, the weed in the uh, book bag, what time period was that? What, you know, like month? Uh, I don't recall what month or time period it was. I have no further questions there, Your Honor. Okay. You, you said you don't remember the month or the time period for the book bag? No, I do not. When did you mention it to someone? Um, uh, yes, the morning that it happened, I mentioned it to the front office. And who was, who was in the front office? Uh, the directors. Who is? Uh, Ms. Angela. Who? Ms. Angela. Uh, and was that ever mentioned to mom or any um, of mom and or dad? Um, from I, mentioned, I mentioned it to Ms. Angela. I didn't mention it to any parents. And you don't know if it was May, April, November, December? I, I don't it recall. It was in the year of 2023, but I don't recall what month it was. And what made you certain that the smell that you were smelling was marijuana when you said it was a little bit of, what do you mean? Um, I wasn't certain that it was the smell, but it kind of was towards the smell of it. But that's why I just made a mention of it to the front. Okay. Judge, may I ask you a question? Um, Kendall, you may present. Oh, Judge, I was asking. Do you have questions, Mr. T Mr. Tannis? Yes, ma'am. I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, you may proceed. Uh, is, Miss Angela is not uh, related to Mr. Drake at all, right? What's Miss Angela's last name? Do you know? Robinson. Okay. And she's not the grandmother or grandfather, correct? No, not at all. Okay, the part who's the grandfather. And you smelled weed before, right? Yes, I have. Okay. No further questions. All right. Um, you may ask questions of Ms. Ficklin. Me, Miss, me, uh, Your Honor. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Ms. Ficklin, anytime that I dropped in Bonnie off, has he been dirty or looked like he wasn't presentable? It was just one time his diaper was full, but you did bring him to school in new clothes. And any time that I was called up to the school during the time that you were watching Thin Bonnie, did I abuse him or talk to him in any angered way? Anything? While, you, while you were in the classroom, you didn't yell at Thin Bonnie. Um, you didn't hit Thin Bonnie. Uh, you always talked to him in a nurturing manner. Um, so no, he didn't. And any time that then Bonnie did act out, um, did I always come up there instantaneously to either talk to him or just take him home with me? You did sometimes. What? What'd you say? I said she did sometimes. Okay, and during the, um, I would say the last month that I was in the state of Georgia and then Bonnie was acting out, can you just describe to the court my behavior towards then Bonnie? Mm -hmm. What did you yep. witness? Uh, you would come into the classroom. He would calm down a lot because he would be, like I said, hitting us, throwing toys, screaming, um, trying to run out the door. And you would come in there, ask him what's wrong. You would tell him, you have on twice that I can't remember had him apologize to us, but you didn't scream or raise your voice. And anytime that the Bonnie did need a refill on diapers or change of clothes, did I make it a point to always bring what he needed up there? Yes, um, it's been times that I've asked you to bring diapers for Timbani. You brought them the next day. You've actually brought us two packs of diapers. Okay. 
think that's all of my questions. If I may, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Fickman, did uh, Mr. Drake also provide diapers to the child when needed? He did provide diapers. Did Mr. Drake also show up if he was called for conferences and times to be with the child? Um, well, we call, uh, I've never called for a conference, um, but most times if he couldn't get off of work, grandmother or grandfather would come get him. And uh, if he could get off from work, he did come, is that right? Oh, yes. Sorry. Was that a yes, ma'am? I'm so sorry. Yeah, yes. Um, no further questions, Your Honor. Um, grandmother, is she at the facility? Not right now, not this facility. Which facility are you at? Oh, she's not located at any facility. I'm located at the Creekstone in Atlanta on Memorial Drive. Okay. And just one last question for me. So Creekstone, okay. So Creekstone on Memorial, is that also related to the one on Deshaun? Yes. Okay, so let me, um, let me disclose um, and then you can figure out how you wish to proceed. So um, I believe I'm familiar with um, the Drakes at Creekstone. My children went there um, from four to, from zero to four. Um, I haven't seen them or talked with them in several, several years, but I remember, um, I believe, might be wrong, but I believe Ms. Drake did pay or did give me funds for my election. So I, I, I subscribe that I am not, um, I am not conflicted. But because I've disclosed those informa that information to you, you could ask the court to be recused. Or I can proceed today on these proceedings and then you can ask afterwards. I'll give you five days afterwards. I'm, I'm ready to proceed, Your Honor. And I appreciate your uh, candor. Uh, and if the court is going to grant five days after, then. I guess, you know, okay. address it if, if need be. Right. What's your position? I think I would like to proceed as well. Okay. Yes. All right. All right, you may proceed. Do you have any additional questions for Ms. Fickling? No yeah, more. Okay, one more. Um, All right, go ahead. So Jordan, the last week that then Bonnie, well, two weeks before then Bonnie was um, moved to a different location, we had a suburbal um, conversation just <laughs> talking about then Bonnie's behavior. Now, is it true that you did mention that whenever then Bonnie does act up and you call the front desk to let them know, they do not call dad to have him to come up there, but I do get called to come up there? Um, no, they do call dad, but most times grandma comes and gets him. Okay, thank you. I, I do have one question, Ms. Ficklin, with regard to the child acting up. Um, nope. The allegation is that the child was on a week on, week off with mom, between mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Did you know which week? I would know which week by who dropped him, well, who came and got him on that week. So by like, I started in November. So by December, I knew in my mind who was coming next week and who was coming that week, the week after. They were pretty consistent on that. Uh-huh. All right. And um, okay, so you were aware just by the fact that who came, that the child was probably between parents. Um, and the the child acting out, is it your position that the child only act out during the weeks that mom had the child, or was that the child had general behavioral issues? Um, I would say Thimbani had general behavioral issues because he 
act, it started to become where he acted out on both weeks towards the end. And uh, Ms. Fickling, mm -hmm. this is this is important, so I need to uh, make sure I'm stressing this. Um, other than the time that you smelled the marijuana, were there any other issues regarding mom, um, mental health, or behavior? I've never seen yeah. her uh, personally act out anyway in front of somebody, so I wouldn't say she had any mental health behavioral issues from what I've noticed. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, then. So, Mr. Mr. Tannen, um, thank you, Ms. Fickling. You're, you're free to leave. Thank you. Do you have any other witnesses, Mr. Tannen? Yes, Your Honor. I, I call Michael Drake, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Drake, I've already sworn you in. Okay. Mr. Drake, I'm going to uh, skip over a lot of stuff because of what the judge asked us to focus on. Um, very quickly, do you have you uh, ever undergone treatment for drug or alcohol related issues? No, sir. Do you use illegal drugs? No. Um, did you submit some character affidavits in support of uh, your parenting of the child that you're asking the court to consider? Yes. Um, <clears throat> Are you fully employed? Yes. Are you able to afford the expenses for Thambani at this time? Yes. Are you um, seeking child support from um, Ms. Uh, Kindle at this time? No. Why is that? Um, I really don't need it. Um, do you understand? Are you concerned about Ms. Kindle's uh, financial ability at this point? I am. Is that part of the reason you're not seeking support at this time? Yes, that too. Okay. Um, you uh, filed a petition for custody and support initially. Why was that? Well, um, we didn't have a legal parenting home in place. And, um, and pretty much, you know, her financial situation just being unstable. So was it, um, did you have any concerns about uh, her drug usage when you filed the petition? Yes. Yes. Uh, during your time period that when you lived together, did Ms. Uh, Kindle use uh, drugs? No. Um, well, she, she, cigarette use. Okay. Uh, did the, um, what I'm sorry, did, can you ask that question one more time? Sure. During the time that they lived together, did Ms. Kendall use um, illegal drugs? Uh, no, I, I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't see that. No. Okay. Uh, why did y'all was one? Of, what was the? Why did y'all div divide up? Why did y'all split up? Um. Just. Uh, just. Uh, and and uh, just we just had differences, which caused us to split up. Yeah. When did you? First, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I, was, I was saying disagreements. Okay. When did you first become aware or suspect that Ms. Uh, Kendall was using uh, drugs? Uh, well, when the daycare worker, uh, when I got, I mean, when I heard from the daycare, you know that uh, Bonnie uh, smelled like marijuana. Um, it made me very concerned for uh, the body, um, his safety as well. So you're concerned about the child's safety and well-being and mother's care, is that right? Yes, sir. Um, right now you have full, just as a matter of fact, full custody of Thimbani, is that right? Yes. And that occurred uh, May 15, I believe, is that correct, of this year? Yes. And how did that occur? She abandoned uh, the child, and uh, I just took it from there and just uh, have, have been raising him, you know, all on my own, and uh, been doing well. Did you know 
uh, you've heard Ms. Uh, Kendall testify. Did you know before May 15 that she was going to be leaving on May 15? Uh, no, uh, she told me after she the fact that she left that she. Uh, you all had discussed the fact, though, that you wanted to relocate previously, correct? Yes, we, yes, we did discuss. Mm -hmm. uh, well, she did, yeah, mention her in her plan. Okay, but she never gave you a date, correct? Um, no, she hasn't given me a date. Mm -hmm. And were you surprised when uh, you found out that the child and her clothing had been dropped off at the daycare? Yes, very surprised. And when you... You only, and just to be clear, you found out after she left that she had dropped off the child in your custody, correct? Yes. Okay. Do you know where she's living now? Uh, well, I, I think she, she know. may be living, I, I, but I don't really truly know. No, I do not know where she is specifically living, where she's living exactly. Has she given you an address where she's living? No, she has not. You know if she's working? No, I don't know if she's working. Do you know what family, friends, or other people she may be staying with? No, I do not know that. Do you have uh, any contact for information for her other than her phone number? No. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there are two parts, and we discussed this, regarding uh, custody of Fimbani. One is decision-making which is called legal custody. Now, in terms of decision-making regarding Fimbani on a temporary basis, right now, what do you think is in Fimbani's best interest? It's in his best interest uh, to remain with me. Um, I can what provide- Decision-making, okay? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just talking about decision-making. So what do you think is in Fembani's best interest regarding decision-making at this time? In his best interest to remain with me as far as decision-making, I mean, to for me to be the main decision-maker, I'm sorry. Are you willing to discuss big decisions with her before uh, you make them? For example, and I'm just going to use like going to the dentist or getting some shots. I don't mind discussing. Okay. So you'd be okay discussing these things as long as you got the final decision if you disagreed, right? Yes. Okay. Um, is that necessary at this point in time, do you believe, for the judge to do that, uh, given that Ms. Uh, Kendall is now living in Missouri? Yes. Now, with respect to what we call parenting time or physical custody, time spent with one parent or another. Um, what do you think right now is in Fembani's best interest? His best interest is to just, uh, as I mentioned, um, just to remain with me uh, for the time being. Okay. Would you be willing to let Ms. Uh, Kindle visit? Uh, sure, she can visit with supervision. Okay. Why do you want supervision? Why do you feel that's necessary? Uh, just so she won't uh, leave with the child um, uh, or anything else that may be out of my control. Um, do, would you want her to have uh, drug and alcohol testing? Do you feel that's in the child's best interest? Absolutely. Would you be willing to submit to random drug and alcohol testing at the same time? Yes. Um, would you be willing to allow mother to have overnights during her visitation period? if she was granted visitation? Yes. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, um, Ms. Kendall, you may ask questions. So Mr. Drake, do you recall our text message on March 1st, where I mentioned to you that my mother has cancer. I have now secured an apartment because I wanted to relocate to have more help with them, Bonnie, on my end. Objection. Do you Honor. remember what your reply was that day? Right, what's the objection, Mr. Tanner? Best evidence, just like in the prior case that Ms. Luton put up. I'm sorry, what was that? Best evidence, Your Honor, just like Ms. Luton did in the prior case. If we're talking about text message, we should see the text message. 
Do you have the text message? Yes, I have a screenshot of this. All right, let me see it. <clears throat> Do you, are you sharing it? Yes, ma'am. I have to share it through my Mac. Okay. Hold on one second. That's the message there. Is there any way you can open it up a little bit? It's kind of blurry. Okay. Okay. So you can ask what ask him questions about it. Okay, so again, in that text message where we had discussed me leaving Georgia due to the fact that my mom was sick and I wanted to relocate it, do you recall that conversation? Yes. And in that conversation, do you remember what you said? Um, no. Is, th is this the conversation you had? Can you look at it, Mr. Drake? Because it, it says it, um, what is in it here is not. Oh, are you asking me if I remember what, 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 what you're showing? Is that what you're asking? Do you remember this conversation in text? Yes. So why are you presenting to the court that she abandoned the child like you said? Don't worry about them, Bob. Take well, care that's of them. because, well, she delayed leaving when she was served, uh, process served. She delayed leaving. So she ended up staying past the um, date that she was intending to leave, which was, uh, was which it was April, April 21st. And what she spoke told me so she ended up delaying the time she was going to leave i'm sorry I, I'm, I'm confused why you think yeah. it's an abandonment issue if she told you well well I, well she she told well she told me but the when she was process served she ended up not leaving she ended up staying in georgia so um i i wasn't really sure when she was going to leave exactly you know, because she told me that she was going to leave April 21st. That's when she was planned. But this was before she was served her papers. Right. And you know, she can't mm -hmm. leave the child once she served her. Yes. Yes, I understand. Yes. But I wasn't, I wasn't sure, you know, she didn't end up leaving on actually leaving on April 21st. So I wasn't sure when she was going to leave exactly. And she didn't notify me until after she had left. Mr. Drake. Yes, ma'am. I'm confused. So you're going to have to help me here. Yes, ma'am. Um, this makes it very clear that her mom is sick and mm -hmm. that she's, she wants to go to Missouri to take care of her mother, for which your response is go do what you need to do, which makes mm -hmm. sense to 
that 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 that's yes, what you're supposed to do. You're being family. Yes, I'll take care of the Bonnie while you are gone. Yes, ma'am. She then tells you she's not going to leave without her baby. There's a suit that hits that prevents her from leaving because you because a suit pre prevents her from leaving the state with the child. And then you file a suit saying there's an abandonment. Well, she, I, I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't really, no, she didn't notify me that she was about to be leaving, uh, you know, when that day that she chose to left and for the family emergency, she didn't notify me. Also, Your Honor, if I, might, if I might say, there's nothing claiming in the petition that there was abandonment. There's claiming that mother left and that there are these concerns about mother's uh, behavior in the past and that father needs to have primary or sole physical custody at this point. The a word abandonment has been used several times on this hearing. I don't, yeah, no, 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 no. The I'm word, sorry, John. The word abandonment was specifically used. Um, specifically used by I knew that because, the, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ma'am. It was used by non-lawyers in a more colloquial fashion than you or I would use them. Mr. Tanum, I'm assuming you probably hadn't had a chance to look at these emails um, um, or these text messages. This is a generally new case. I'm assuming that might be the case because the way you presented it in your opening is that your client had no clue what was happening. And all of a sudden she drops a kid off and poof, she's gone to Missouri to, you know, into the, you know, to fairyland to enjoy her life and has no regard for what's going on with her child as she smokes herself away. That's basically how this came across to the court. And you asked me to do a guardian ad litem on it when it's clear from reading these messages that your client was aware that her mother was sick with cancer and specifically told her to do what she needed to do as a result of that. And when she does do it, then he uses that opportunity to then file this document acting as if she had no regard, like she doesn't want to be a part of her child's life. And then the only issue you present to the court isn't that you have a, a, a worker at the school who thinks she gets a whiff of some marijuana on a child's bag, for which mom has not smoked previously. Mr. Drake does not has not indicated she's smoking previously, and he wants me to submit her to a drug testing on a whiff of a of a book bag. Well, Judge, I think that we can resolve that issue based on cross and the evidence that we can introduce showing that mother is seeking weed, mother is smoking weed, uh, and mother's doing this in June of 2023. Is doing what in June of 2023? Marijuana. And and where's where's the evidence of that, you say? The evidence is that I was going to present in my cross. Uh, it is text messages between Ms. Um, Kindle and uh, certain of her friends or supplier. Okay. Well, let's see, because for right now, I, this this right here, this message right here concerns me about the idea that the mom abandoned a child when he knows good and well where mother And then your honor, just to admit that second text message where he said before May 15th that he didn't have notice that I left due to the emergency. This was way before then. I had told him I just talked to Miss Christina that Friday before May the 15th. That was the still his week that he had in Bonnie and told him what was going on again. And then I finally had to just leave due to my mom's emergency surgery. All right, all right. I'm I'm done on the issue of a 
the whole abandonment thing. Let's go to the issue of um, any issues that you might have regarding um, the issue of drugs, Mr. Hamlin. Very good. Uh, I have no further questions for Mr. Drake, Your Honor. I'm going to reserve on Mr. Drake. I may have a few for him. Very good, Your Honor. Uh, I'm going to call Ms. Uh, Kendall on cross, Your Honor. Ms. Kendall, you've been sworn. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Ms. Kendall, um, you're currently living in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, is that right? Yes. And uh, what's your address there? St. Louis, Missouri. And is this a rental or are you living with someone else? I'm currently residing with my mother. Okay, so you did not take the rental that you had mentioned previously? to Mr. Drake, is that correct? Yes, due to the fact that I did stay longer than anticipated, so I ended up losing the apartment. Okay, so um, are you working right now? Yes. And who do you work for? I currently still do Uber, and then I do at-home home care. Who do you work the home care for? My two grandparents. So you're having your grandparents pay you, is that it? Yes, it's a state funded program. I'm waiting on the paperwork to get finalized, but yeah. Currently you're not receiving income from them, is that correct? Not at the moment, no. Um, and how often are you driving the Uber? Every day. Um, do you smoke uh, weed? No. Okay. Have you smoked weed in the past? No. Have you smoked weed since you were pregnant? No, I haven't. And um, when, ma'am, you, you're five months pregnant, is that correct? 15 weeks, yes. 15 weeks? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that would put you back to, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of, let's see. That would be um, May, April, March, early March you got pregnant, is that right? Uh, I would think so, but I found out I was pregnant April the 2nd. <laughs> I was eight weeks at that time. All right. And um, I'm going to uh, share a screen with you. God willing, it'll work. Can you see this? No. My apologies. Yeah. Can you try the share again? One second. I have my young associate helping me because this is not my forte. Okay. Okay. Can you see the screen here, ma'am? Yes. Okay. And um, do you recognize this conversation? What there's there's um there isn't a conversation. These are just list right now. Okay, Who, who's saying that? I'm so sorry. It's, it's the it's the court. I'm your sorry. it's your screen right now. Just yes. has a list of conversations. Okay, and do you see this list of conversations, ma'am? Yes. Okay, and do you know Chris Dobson? Dobson. Yes, he's an associate of an associate. And do you know uh, No, I don't know those numbers. Um, and did you uh, did Chris Dodson provide you with weed in the past? No, when I when my son was away and I would have get-togethers, friends that did smoke would ask. So yeah. Okay, so you're saying you do not smoke, and uh, when was the last time, have you ever smoked marijuana? No, I have not, not since college. Okay, 
Um, thank you. Uh, can you get that to work? Isn't that you in this video? Yes, that is me. Okay. And is that a blunt we just saw in your hand? That is what it's called, a herbal blunt. That okay. is a, um, it has Murdoch root in there, a lot of other herbs, but that's not marijuana. Okay, so you're saying you're not smoking marijuana in that video, is that right? Yes. Okay. Get that one to work. And you rec recollect this picture of you, correct? Yes. And uh, you see the smoke coming out of your mouth. Are you saying that that's not marijuana either? That is not. That's from the herbal blunt that I, that you just witnessed in the last video. And you're saying again, this is the same thing, just an herbal blunt that you're exhaling for the camera. Is that right? Yes. I had brought that from a smoke and vape shop. A smoke and bake shop where? It's called a uh, smoke and puff. It's where's that street? It's what? Uh, it's called smoke and vape. If you go down Covington Height, like Covington Drive, it should be you should run straight into it. And you're saying you can? There are things that you can smoke that you buy from here. Mm -hmm. They're called pre roll herbal blunts. So they have non THC, uh, different products, babes, things of that nature, but no like marijuana is sold there. Uh, Ma'am, you were, uh, were you pregnant at this time? Pregnant at which time? Were you pregnant during the time that these pictures were taken in which you claim you were smoking an herbal blunt? No, I wasn't pregnant. And during the time where we were having, uh, do you recall having a conversation uh, regarding moving and your fear that your children be taken by defects? Um, pretty much. Do you recall having a conversation like that recently? I mean, probably so, but I didn't had a lot of conversations due to the nature of this whole case. So. I'm not sure which specific conversation you're referring to. I'm going to play the tape for you and tell me if you identify your voice on this. So the thing he was doing in the Mac Michael um, half and Bonnie for now because. Is that your voice on the tape? Yes. I continue to play the tape. I'm just not financially stable. And then on top of that, me fighting this case thus far and then being scammed out of money has now resulted in me like literally having to struggle to now maintain my bills and to just pay, um, you know, my rent and whatnot. So it's like, if you were to go to court next week, I could be deemed unfit. And then the fact that he has called defects on me too, to try to get the upper hand in the case. Um, they can't even like try to take my unborn baby when it's born and just award it to the state. So it's just a real fucked up situation and position that I'm in. So I'm like, instead of stressing myself out even more and like digging myself in a deeper hole, I just have to, you know, forfeit this time around and yeah, go back home to St. Louis, get set up there, you know, have the baby there and just, you know, have my nurse, my nourishing family and support from them. And then that way I can get up on my feet a little bit more so I'm in a better position to fight the case financially from a financial standpoint. So that's kind of why I met with things. And it was a, that was the hard decision I had to make because obviously I don't want to leave them on here, leave him here, or just, you know, feel like I'm just not fighting for him. But at this point, it's like, you know, because Michael has literally put me in this position, so I have no choice at this point. Because if I continue to try to fight the case, it's just only going to backfire on me at this point. 
and then I'm going to have negative commentary in the courts, and then I'm going to get my parental rights taken away due to my situation now. So um, just when I talk to family, and you know, I've been sitting on this decision for a couple of days now, and that's just what is the most logical approach to, you know, being able to fight for somebody in the future without me being deemed unfit to the courts at the moment. What 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 is this um, the audio related to? Your Honor, it, it relates to two things. One is which that she did not leave simply because of her mother. In fact, she really, she left. No, 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 that's what I'm asking. Where'd you get the audio from? What is it? The audio was a recording on a mutually owned uh, device that Ms. Uh, Kindle had left at Mr. Uh, Drake's apartment for a care. Sorry, what? Mr. Drake paid for certain phones. The phone, she, there was an extra phone there, and the phone came, uh, was replaced, and the recording was on the phone that was left. Objection, Your Honor, because since then, since 2021, <laughs> this is the phone that I've had. He does not have my iPhone 7. I have that in my mm -hmm. possession. How did the recording, how did he get the recording? That's what I'm sitting here trying to wonder myself because I sent that specific recording to three friends due to the fact that I was trying to get a lawyer to fight my case for me, but I ended up getting scammed by that lawyer out of money. And then, which put me behind in my bills, like card notes. How did, how, how did he get the, Mr. Drake, how did you get the, the recording? It was it was on a device that was uh that was uh, that I found, and um, it was on a device that you found. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Found where? I'm, um, I found it among my things, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I honestly feel like he just had my phone book because literally since we've been broken up, I've had all of my possessions. Okay, wait a minute. I, I, how did you get the? How did you get the items among your phone? What do you mean by that? No, well, it, the what, what are you asking me, uh, Your Honor? Are you asking me how did the recording get on the phone? Is that what you're at? I'm, I'm trying to understand the question, Your Honor. I'm sorry. I'm trying to, I'm asking you, how did you get the phone amongst your things? This happened in May. I'm assuming yeah. you all haven't been together. So, how did you get the phone? I found it, Your Honor. Uh, I found it among my things. Among your things that I, moved, that I yeah, among the things that I you know moved when we moved, we we had U-Haul boxes, and I found it among that. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I will have to refute that because literally, <laughs> none of my personal things have been in his possession. He actually dropped off the last of my personal things to me earlier this year, and which was just a coat and some little jewelry trinkets and that was about it i don't understand how he got a whole phone recording off of my personal cell phone and even then so how did you break like how did you get into that said device without having my apple id and password to even assess to have access to those audios because again those were sent from my now personal device that i have That recording would have been, uh, I'm assuming, in 2023. So you're saying that it was recorded on which device did you get? What? Where is the device? Uh, yeah, yes, Yana. Uh, device is uh, is in my possession, Yana. And on that device, it was downloaded. How how did you? What made you open the device that you hadn't seen in several years to look for it? Oh, it was in the box, Your Honor. Um, and uh, just, I, I didn't know what whose device it was. I, I happened to open it, and, and that, that's how I came across the recording, Your Honor. And and what, when you opened it, it didn't have any codes on it? You just were able to? Uh, well, the, the, pass, the password, I mean, it was like a little sticky note of a password on there on the phone on the device so i just entered that and was able to get in and it was your device that i'm sorry go ahead your honor i'm sorry it was your device no uh no well from after i looked at it uh 
I, I, I mean, when I saw everything, it, I figured, uh, you know, once, once, once I saw everything, you know, the, the photos and everything like that, I, I was shocked, and I was like, oh, you know, this must have been her device. But I didn't know that at first that this was her device, Your Honor. So the photos that you just showed, all those photos came off of this device. Uh, well, the, the, yes, they did. They came off that device, Your Honor. Those photos are actually on my social media, Miss uh, Your Honor. It's on my Instagram page and social media as well, too, Your Honor. And when did you have those doc those documents? The the ones from social media, Your Honor. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. When did you see those? Um, I saw those um, uh, recently. Um, I just happened to you know come across her page. And I saw, you know, her photos of her pregnant. And Your Honor, can I mention that my Instagram and all my social media pages are private? You would have to request me to see anything on my and, social media. And, and, and I can show you, Your Honor, that I can actually see, still see her wall of photos, you know, as, you know, I'm coming across her page on my Facebook. Oh, y'all can, so you're saying that y'all are connected as friends? Well, not any, well, not anymore. But I can still see her wall of like photos on her Facebook page from my profile. How when I have you blocked on Facebook? Your Facebook page or her Instagram page? It's a Facebook page. I didn't say anything about Instagram. But I have you blocked on Facebook, Michael Drake. You're blocked on Facebook. I can show you. I can show you right here. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Thanks. <clears throat> Anything else? Yes. Can you ask him what device it is? He never still answered that question. Is it a phone? Is it a tablet? Is it what device is it? It's I think phone. it's a cell phone that that had the code written on a sticky on the front of it. Yes, yes, ma'am. So, what kind of phone is it? Because I have my iPhone six S and my iPhone seven, and then the only two iPhone devices I have outside of this now eleven. I'm not too good with iPhones as far as what type it is. So how is it that I have both of my iPhones in my possession with this current one that I do have and you supposedly have my old iPhone device? All right, I'm going to let you all resolve whatever privacy issues. You can resolve those at a later later, a later time um, and figure um, those things out um, at, that, at that time. Um, all right, Mr. Canham, any additional questions you might have for her? Um, no, Your Honor. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, I... I, I'm not going to grant the motion for the guardian ad litem. I don't think it's necessary. Um, I think for if for two and a half years you kind of were able to manage, um, and there were no real issues other than um, an issue about the child going to a daycare one time with a soiled diaper, um, and perhaps a smell of an herbal blunt, which she says she was. Certain or not certain, I don't know. Um, I I can't say that I'm completely ignorant to the fact that um, there are other vapes and things that could produce smoke um, and those similar smells, but I can't tell you if that's true or not. I, I think there's been a sufficient evidence to submit at least the consideration that there could be marijuana use. Um, however, and I don't know whether or not you are continuing to use marijuana or not, um, and uh, and whether or not that would make a if and if you are pregnant and are not using marijuana, then that would mean your test would likely be negative. Um, and uh, and then if it is, I don't know if it necessarily answers the question whether she did in the past. And I don't know if whether you did in the past would affect um, whether or not your parenting needs and are, are met. I don't know. But 
I think there's at least something to present to the court who asked for the test. So I will grant that request. Um, but uh, I, I'm also going to allow visitation um, so that we can kind of figure it out. Um, but I don't think that she needs supervised visitation. The concern that you have about her leaving the state, I'm going to give her permission to leave the state um, with the child. The court retains jurisdiction um, of this child. And that's where we'll have our hearings in this state. Um, but it, I think it was very clear she was going to Missouri, at least um, for the benefit of her family and to get some support, particularly having a second child on the way. <clears throat> um, so we will um, consider visitation in two manners. One, We'll have one weekend where she can come to Georgia, and we'll have one weekend where she can bring the child to St. Louis. How old is the child now? He's three. three. Um, it might make a lot of sense, and I know he's in a program, and I know you don't really like to bring your child out of programs, but he is three. Um, maybe we can do where Ian, he'll do a week in Missouri a month. I'm sorry, Judge. I, I apologize. I'm hearing impaired and I know your throat, but what did you say? I was saying that instead of doing it, we're in, there's extensive travel between the child going back and forth that maybe she can do a week with the child uh, every week, one week in Missouri. One week a month, is, is that it? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry and I'm. it's me. It's okay. I'm very hearing impaired. Was yeah. one week a month, was that I was saying that she can have visitation. Yes. Because the child is three and not officially in school, I'm okay with her having one week of visitation with the child a month. Um, and I am going to note that that visitation will be at a mother's expense. So you can visit for one week. I will also allow you to have a Georgia weekend visit as well. Um, and that would likewise be at your expense. So if we can do first and third, first week, you could come to Georgia. Weekend, you could come to Georgia. Third weekend, you could get him for the week and bring him back the following um, Friday. <clears throat> Friday at day. Um, 8 p.m. on Friday, and we'll do that until we kind of figure out what's going on. Um, and when, hold on, I'm sorry. So when do I pick him up? But I know I drop him off that Friday. You said first weekend we would say Friday. You can pick him up Friday at daycare. Like what we say um, Friday from daycare, and so at any time on Friday from daycare would be fine. And then you would return him to school. You can either return him to school on Monday morning um, or you can return him to dad's house on Sunday evening. And then the third weekend, you would pick him up on Friday from daycare and you would deliver the child back to father for to daycare at fr Friday to daycare or Friday to dad's house. For the um, week visit, correct? Oh, it'll be Friday to Friday. It'll be Friday to Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so generally, just so you'll be mindful, Miss um, Kendall, I don't want you to make a lot of, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to give you a slight bit of advice. I don't want you to make a lot of permanent decisions in St. Louis. Um, so I know you might be looking at an apartment. You might want to sign a lease agreements. Um, so I just want you to be mindful of, of the permanency of where you are because you have removed, you have um, moved from the state of Georgia. Georgia was where this child was born. Georgia is where for the last two and a half years you've been raising this child. Um, I'm not saying that the court does not grant permission from people to leave and then come up with some type of parenting plan that works. I am, however, saying I don't know necessarily what the court will do 
And as many times as I have allowed it, I have many times not allowed it. Um, I have has just as many times not allowed it. Um, and so I just want you to be mindful of that so that you don't put yourself in a financial strain. And it turns out the court says that, you know, these are, this is how this visitation is going to work and it may not be financially in your position. So you just need to be mindful of making permanent decisions, i.e. like buying a house. Um, and then the court decides that, you know, whatever, I, you know, there are a plethora of ways I can make a decision. I could say, you'll visit once a week or all visits be in Georgia, or I, I don't know, because I don't understand the circumstances of this child, what his needs are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I, uh, but I, what I do know is that the child was born here, raised here, reared here, you all met here. So I just want to be mindful of those circumstances. But by the same token, if your position is you don't get any help here, there are no financial, financially, there's nothing here for you or whatever those issues might be, the court might very well make a decision um, in the opposite realm. I don't know, but I'm just putting that bug in your ear so you'll be mindful, particularly since you are. So with that being said, Judge, so I shouldn't pursue my master's here because I was about to get accepted into my pastoral master's program. I'm not telling you what you should do, what you should not do. I'm giving you an outlook of some things you need to be considerate of, okay? Because I mean, you could very well start a master program that's going to be finished in a year, and it might take me a year to get to your case. I don't know. I can't tell you that, but I am telling you that you have left the state of Georgia with a child that was born here, raised here, reared here. There is a, a possibility of those findings against you. There's just as well a possibility that it, 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 it might not be the case, and the court might construct something that allows the visitation. It just depends on the age of the child, the maturity of the child, your relationship, how much he makes, how much you make, is a plethora of things I have to consider. But I just don't want you to be caught off guard by possibility. And that's only because you're representing yourself. So this is not me prejudging. I'm just kind of giving you an outlook to be considerate of, okay? Okay. So if I might- um, like I said, you have five days. All right. I'm, I'm sorry, no, Judge, I'm, if I may jump in for a second. Mm -hmm. um, just on the temporary basis I have that I'm assuming you would want me to prepare the order to submit. Is that correct or no? Yes. So you're going to, you'll get, because you got granted portion of what you requested, you'll do the order. That is that she'll um, do a drug test. And um, how, how will that be yeah, done? You just, you'll just indicate that she'll go in and take a drug test. Okay. Um, you'll give her probably five days. From the date I signed the order to do it, so documents should be, would be sent to the court directly. If they're positive, I'll probably call us another hearing and we'll discuss it. Um, if they are negative, then Mr. Drake will pay for it. And where would I have to conduct a drug test? That just do it to any lab. Um, so I don't know exactly what St. Louis has, but most of them have laboratories that will do a drug test. Okay. Have like Quest and like Quest. Like, I don't know what they might call them. Yeah, up there. yeah. Like Quest Labs, any lab. Lab, lab core. Lab yeah, core. that's another one. Yeah, yeah. Um, just, you, can, you can find them in the um, book and just kind of walk in and take the test. Generally, a test is going to cost you anywhere from a hundred to three hundred dollars to take it. Um, and like I said, if it's if you're negative, then Mr. Drake will reimburse you immediately. If you're positive, then I'll call another hearing. And, and Judge, um, in terms of, uh, it'll be joint legal as well. I'm assuming that given the child's location right now on a temporary basis, father would be the final have tie-breaking authority on the temporary basis? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, right now, they'll make joint decisions to the extent there is a tiebreaker, Mr. Drake will make it. Um, so of course, if, if you have an emergency issue while you're in, St. Louis, while the week that you have him there, then of course you would make those final decisions because there, there are emergency issues. Um, but for example, let's say that during the week that he's there, you want him to attend some type of daycare, right? Because you know you still work during that week and you still want him to have a daycare experience. 
you and Mr. Drake would talk about where that daycare, where which daycare he would go to, and then y'all would make a final decision. He wouldn't necessarily say, no, you can't go to daycare, but you all would discuss which one it might be, something like that. So on the basis of daycare now, because he ended up moving Thin Bonnie without my knowledge to a different location there in Georgia, and I'm not listed on none of the contact information. I don't get any of his daily reports. So now Is that something he can now change? Because I do want to be informed on his day-to-day -day there. <clears throat> so now, Mr. Drake, you would need to put her on there so that she could be listed as a parent and get the information. Um, one last thing, Judge, from my and Ms. Uh, Kendall, I don't have an email address for you. And when I send a draft into the court, I'm required to copy you as well. So do you have an e a good email that I could send use, please? Why don't you put it in the chat, Ms. Kendall? Um, and is oh. that the same email that Ms. Marshall sent you notice to? Yes, ma'am. I was going to say it's the same email I've been getting all of the notices through. Yeah, okay. Just, you just send it to Mr. Tanum just then, just to make certain. Yeah, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Yeah, and that way he'll, he'll send that order to you that I'm going to sign. But essentially, I'm granting the motion for the drug test. I'll give you five days from the date the court signs the order to take, take the test. Um, if it's positive, we'll um, have another hearing. If it's negative, you'll submit the cost to Mr. Drake. Mr. Drake will pay you within the next five days. Um, you'll have visitation with the child the first and third weekend. The first week will be visit in Georgia. You can get him anywhere from Friday from daycare, any point, anytime on Friday from daycare, return the child to daycare on Monday morning at 9 a.m. Or you can return him to father Sunday night by 7 p.m. And then on the third weekend, you can get him anytime on Friday at 8 p.m., returning the child back to it. Um, daycare anytime on Friday or return them to the dad's home Friday by 7 p.m. Okay, would all that be written down to me? Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was just a lot. Right. Yes. All right. Any other issues? No. All right. Thank you. Y'all take care. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Take care. Oh, and one more thing too, Mr. Tanum, just so if you'll just put this in the bottom of the order that the court disclosed um, an old, very old relationship and that the parties have, will have five uh, days to file an motion for a recusal if they believe it's necessary. Y y Your Honor, did you, uh, when did you want the proposed order by, return by? Oh, Mr. Tanum, when can you present that proposed order to the I court? have a huge trial on uh, Tuesday. I think I could still get it out by Tuesday, Your Honor. Because okay, Tuesday the Tuesday the twentieth. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that'll work because that that'll come up too because we we just passed the third weekend. So let's see. We we'll, we would not we would be on first, second, thirds. And and if Ms. Marshall would put also the email that I send it to you at the best one, that would be great. So let me ask you, um, Miss. Um, Ms. Kendall, you know, I gave you first and third and I flipped them. Do you want me to flip them so that you could start your first week in July so that you'll have a long week on the first weekend and a short weekend on the third? That way you could see them two weeks earlier. But you, you have a longer period. Or do you want me to keep it where it is so you can kind of financially get yourself to, together? Um, yeah. right you've already missed your first and third week in the month of June. So the next time that you would have a potential visit would be July or would be the July 30th, would be July 1st. So that July 1st would be your first weekend and it would be in Georgia and it would be the short weekend. Um, and then the next time you would have them would probably be mid, you know, sometime in mid July for the week. Do you want me to keep it that way or do you want me to give you your first week? In, starting July 1st, so that you'll get the child from like July 1st through July 7th. Um, you can you can make it the longer one because I do have a doctor's appointment that I can't miss that's coming up on. Oh, 
Yeah, I have a doctor's appointment July the 8th. Okay, so just keep it as is. So yes, that your first weekend will be the short weekend in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. All right, thank you so much. Y'all take care. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.